this morning. Uh, I, yes, I didn't uh, contribute there. I, I should have. Uh, I'm in New Jersey, very close to New York City, at home. Okay, great. All right. So <laughs> that's good. I'm going to be in that area. In the United, uh, in the United in States. The United I'm States. You know, when we're online, we're all at home, or, you know, if everybody can write where you are. Are you in the office? Are you at the beach? At a restaurant? On the moon? I don't know. Um, wherever you happen to be. Let's see where um, you've got Egypt there. Great. I hope the weather is good. Not too hot, not too cold. And we've got Julia, who's at home. Anyone at the beach, or a restaurant, or unusual place. Okay, great. All right, isn't it wonderful that we can get all these people from different places in one, you know, one kind of uh, spot. But the spot is not really, you know, it's not where we all are, yet we are, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, we can't really grasp it, but it's here we are. Wonderful. All right, so I'm going to get started and introduce you, Jason. Uh, Jason R. Levine. It is uh, a lot. Okay, that's me. Um, he's currently the academic director of Campus Education, and I hope you'll tell us a little bit about that so we can get involved. I'm sure many uh, would like to. Um, it's a privately owned English Language Institute, which centers in the United States and overseas, so Jason, maybe uh, people are interested in franchising, I don't know what you have in mind, but um, maybe people are interested in partnering with you. For the past several years, Jason has been developing an approach to English language teaching, that's ELT, based on songs that he writes and performs, and he calls them fluency MC, if you could explain later on maybe what that is, these songs called Colotunes uh, promote the acquisition of collocations and help build critical thinking skills. Now that's interesting, you know, how songs can bring us to critical thinking. So I hope you're writing all that down, Jay. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in 2011, which wasn't long ago, Jace wrote the chant for the upcoming edition of the Oxford English Picture Dictionary for kids. He is currently writing songs for a new uh, OUP, which is Oxford, I guess, or is it Open University? I'm not sure what that is. No, series Oxford University. No. Oxford, okay. A <coughs> uh, series for adults and a series for children in Turkey. So that's really not commendable. If you want to get in touch with Jake, all you have to do is Google his name, actually. Or you've got his Gmail, which is hollowlearn at gmail.com. His website is also hollow and spark. Dot com. So uh, we sure will be sparkling after uh, <laughs> hearing from Jason. I know I always do. So uh, Jason's full of energy, you know, and I think that he, people don't understand this energy, but it's very positive, and I think that's what's making our world a better place. So with people like Jason, that uh, spark us and make us feel wonderful. All right, so here's a... Uh, I don't know if you want to start with this, or you want to start with uh, this. Yeah, great. This one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so here's, I'm going to give you a uh, writing tool so you can move along. Uh, this is a conversation, but it's everything you want it to be, so we kind of let things happen. Um, so, Jace, I'll let you take over, and if you need me, I'm right here in the background. That's great. Yeah, well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nelly Joyce, for that introduction and for making this happen and to Dolly who helped us make this happen and hello everybody uh, I'm so excited every time uh, I come on with IQ and uh, I hope to do it much much more going forward in the future and um, Dr. Nelly I will um, address two questions that you already uh, raised uh, what what does fluency MC mean uh, and then also about my uh, claim that I can help uh, children and adults uh, get critical thinking skills, develop higher order uh, thinking skills, especially in a second language. That can be very challenging. Uh, but first, first, uh, I see so many great 
things happening in the chat box. So I really wish I could get in there and, and chat with you while I'm talking. I'll make sure there's time to ask me questions because I do like to talk, it's true. Uh, so I'll try not to talk too much. Make sure if you have questions uh, to be able to, to ask me. Um, I wanted to start with a little rhyme I wrote uh, to demonstrate what I do to people who don't know what I do uh, and also to greet you and uh, to talk about pronunciation at first uh, in, in my music that I make for learning English. And uh, you notice here in these lyrics, there are some words that are in red. What do you think those red words are for? Does anyone have an idea? I'm going to do the uh, song in a moment. It's not really a song, it's just a short uh, verse. What do you think the red uh, adjectives, good idea, but it's not about, it's not about vocabulary, stress. There's Mr. Kahlo himself, Julio Gomez, uh, representing uh, here today. Uh, it's exactly, he's exactly right. So when I do the song, it looks like it got cut off at the bottom a little bit, but that's okay. I think you can see it. Um, notice, and I'll also clap, uh, or snap my fingers or clap, so you can notice the stress which is natural, just like in conversation. So I use my songs not to teach people to sing or rap, uh, but to <clears throat> give people uh, exposure and practice with natural English for conversations. So in conversation, we would do it the same way. Here's how it sounds when I rhyme it. Old friends, new friends, so nice to see you. Let's get this party started on Wiz IQ. Fluency you see is in the three arms. Relax, repeat, remember, it'll take you far. You'll learn without looking when you stop feeling bored and stressed. Having fun is when you learn the best. So, in conversation, we would also say, so nice to see you. But in a song, sometimes they say things like, so nice to see you, <laughs> which is not how we speak when we uh, are in natural conversation. So I make these rap songs uh, for two big, big reasons. One is uh, vocabulary, grammar uh, development, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And the other is natural pronunciation and listening skills uh, in English as a second language. So let's try that together. I know you're not here, I can't hear you. Oh, there's EF, hello EF. <laughs> uh, Let's do it together. I can't hear you, but I trust you're going to do it with me. I'll do it slow enough so that you can do it. Ready? Old friends, new friends, so nice to see you. Let's get this party started on Wiz IQ. Fluency you see is in the three arms. Relax, repeat, remember, it'll take you far. You'll learn without looking when you stop feeling bored and stressed, having fun is when you learn the best. Oh, can't hear. Should I take off my headphones? Is that a problem? Ah. Uh, can someone tell me if that's better, if you can't hear? Is that better? Uh, no, no? Okay. Okay. Okay, most people can hear. Thank you, thank you. I remember last time there was a, an echo or something. It was my fault, so uh, I, I wanted to make sure it's, it's not my fault. Uh, in this rhyme here, I'm greeting you, but also talking about fluency and uh, also the three R's. Pete, remember, when we listen to music, no, 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 uh, and it doesn't have to be music we like. It could be a commercial, it could be some stupid music no, 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 we don't no, no, like. You're fine. But if we're relaxed, if they're having just watching TV, here comes the commercial again and again. Or some song we like, so we relax and enjoy it and we listen many times, we remember it. It stays in our head. Okay? So that's why I do what I do with music. And many people use music to teach. I use it especially to teach adults English as a second language, but also kids. I try to make music that's more uh, engaging, more fun, and I use rap music 
because the rhythm of rap is great for the conversation, the stress that we have in English. And as you see at the bottom, the most important thing to me, having fun when you learn is when you learn the best. So when I say relax, I mean relax and enjoy. I like to see the comments over here. Everyone loves music. Who doesn't love music? Can you imagine someone? It's like saying, I don't love food. You can have different kinds of food you like, right? Because your mother made you this or your country has this. It's the same with music, right? Your mother sings you a song or your country has certain music, right? Music is part of all of us. So I'm trying to use that uh, when I teach. And I love connecting with people all over the world that are like here now uh, because with videos and technology now, it's so easy to do that. So I want to talk to you about my name. My name, uh, Jason R. Levine, and then for short is Jace. Uh, my, the name I use for my music is Fluency MC. So I want to talk about fluency today in a few ways, but about MC, because people ask me about that. MC traditionally stands for Master of Ceremonies, okay? Master of Ceremonies is the person, the MC, with the microphone at an event, like a wedding or some kind of big party, and he or she is the person in charge of the event. So when rap music began, DJs uh, were the rappers, the, the party, uh, uh, the, the focus of the party, and then their friends soon became the rappers with the microphone, the MCs. So that word MC or that abbreviation is used in two ways, to talk about the master of ceremonies of an event and also to talk about a, a rapper, an MC is a rapper. So uh, those two roles are important to me. Uh, I am using rap, rhyme, to teach, and also uh, on Facebook especially and in other places, I'm trying to be a little bit of a event organizer uh, so that uh, I can connect with other teachers and learners and we can uh, keep building uh, our knowledge uh, to get to a higher, higher order thinking, which I will come back to. That was one of uh, Dr. Nelly's questions. Do you have any questions right now? Why do rappers rap? Interesting. <laughs> well, I guess one answer is why do... Why does anyone do what they do? Uh, do you mean, um, Dr. Nelly, where this, uh, this style came from? Uh, I see the question again, why do rappers rap? And hello, Martina. It's so nice to see uh, familiar faces here. Uh, ah, but what do they rap about? So one thing that's really, uh, to me, very, very... Uh, exciting about rap music is it's it's a way to express many different things so whether it's rap music that's political or for a party uh, or expressing creativity in writing uh, rap music is a, is a wonderful means of expression and one thing I want to say uh, well there are many reasons people rap for me as I said before the rhythm of hip-hop Rap and hip-hop music, same, same thing. The rhythm is more like natural conversation than uh, music that has melody. So it's much, much uh, better to teach uh, stress and reduced uh, forms, connected speech, which I call shrinking and linking. And <clears throat> excuse me, it's also uh, music that uh, is very popular internationally. So there are many kinds of hip-hop that are... Uh, now uh, that reflects the, the music and cultures of different countries and people around the world. So um, it's a natural choice for me. Uh, I want to use it also to teach standard English, not because I'm against dialect. So rap music from this country and in most countries has a lot of dialect, uh, slang, uh, which is great. But when you're learning a second language, as we all know, <laughs> That is not the first thing to do. We need the standard forms uh, of the language to be accurate and fluent there. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we could build uh, some knowledge in dialect and slang. So uh, I use rap music, but I 
carefully write everything to reflect a standard English and high, 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 high frequency vocabulary in the form of collocations, which is what I'm going to talk about uh, next. Great chats going on there uh, on the side. And great to see 51 people here. Really nice. Uh, could we go to the next slide? Or I can do that, right, Nelly? So I just go up here. Oops. Uh, this is what I've been talking about already. Um, just made a little uh, collage here to illustrate it. When you relax and enjoy your time, it's easy to learn with rhythm and rhyme. So we learn so much from repeated rhythms and rhymes, lullabies from our uh, parents, uh, as I said before, commercials, maybe we don't always want to remember uh, the, uh, what's in a commercial. And rhyme and rhythm does not have to just be rap music, too. And I see there's a little chat going on here, which is really important. Uh, I want to show you today a song which is more uh, R&B, soul music, that I did with my group LT Funk. And I have a reggae song. And I like the idea of doing music in the future that is... You know, rock music, uh, music uh, from different countries, cultures. Uh, I'm going to seven countries uh, soon. I'm going to announce today which countries I'm going to. And that's one thing I'd like to do this time when I travel is to explore possible uh, collaborations with uh, musicians so that the music is music that everybody wants to hear. Uh, and any kind of music can also have a rap element, a rap rhythm in it. Uh, so I'm going to go to the next the next slide. Uh, I want to talk about collocations. Uh, I have a, a new song today, Make and Do, with words that make and do go together with. Those are the chunks that we use uh, to learn language, collocations, which I call collos. And it uh, looks like the video is getting ready. We're not quite ready for that, but glad it's up there. I want to do that uh, soon. Thank you so much for that. And uh, what I'm doing now uh, on the Fluency page on Facebook, please join us if you're not there yet, I am creating and posting Kalo posters, which is, uh, these are uh, free uh, teaching tools and uh, tools for students or teachers to illustrate high-frequency word combinations. So here the key word is what? Who can tell us what the, the key word or the head word is? in this Kahlo poster. Stress, thank you, Sandra. We have here verbs or adjectives uh, combining with this word stress. What do we have here? Stress is a noun. What do you see here? Do you see verbs or adjectives? Thank you, Katya. Verbs, you made it, Katya. Wonderful. Uh, grammatically, there are many, many possible combinations with a noun, like stress, many verbs, but these verbs are the ones we use most often, and other ones too. This is just a sample. Uh, so I want to illustrate that, and my songs have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, have, uh, I'm distracted by uh, uh, Nathan's comment too, but, ooh, really good comment there. Uh, I'll show you how to get to all my materials. But the, the color posters and the songs are similar because I make my songs full of these collocations, colors. Um, and I don't have a song yet particularly about stress, uh, but I do about some other ones. Let's see what else I brought. Change. Here, it's a little different, isn't it? <clears throat> Is change a verb or a noun in this poster? Who can tell us? It's a verb. So change is both a verb and a noun. Uh, stress is actually as well. Uh, and here we have nouns that Kahlo, and this is my body language for Kahlo, uh, that Kahlo with the verb change. So change your mind, change your password. Uh, sometimes I do little freestyle raps uh, about from the posters, like change your mind, change your password. With a baby, change your diaper. Change money if you need to from for the rest of your life. I'll need the subject. Change the world and the schools. 
You change flights, you change a lot, change your point of view if you're cool. Uh, what could teachers do uh, if you're a teacher? Do you have any teachers out there? What could teachers do with a list like this? So I make songs with it, but you don't have to just make a song. Uh, what could you do with your students uh, as a way to learn uh, these columns? You could just look at it, but there might be some ways to practice stories. I love that. Some of my songs are story style, but you don't need music for a story. Anybody can write a story. Role play. So you could uh, use what's here as a word bank. Students could select from the poster to make a word play. Poems, dialogue, musical stories. I like that. So lots of different things you could do with the posters. This is a new one that a lot of people like. It's a cut off here, sorry. Uh, here I've got on the top adjectives, teenage love, real love, eternal love, and then verbs on the left that come before love, so feel love, uh, seek love. The grammar is all here if you want it, right? So transitive verb plus uh, complement a direct object. Uh, love is a transitive verb uh, with a complement. Excuse me. But I don't uh, want to focus on the grammar. I want to focus on vocabulary development and especially the repetition uh, so that students have it automatically. If we just look at a list like this, it's not very useful. But if we do something active uh, and we get a lot of exposure repeated, then these colors can, can stick in your head. I also do uh, more grammar-focused ones. So here's uncountable nouns, too much information, more than enough vocabulary. When we started, uh, Dr. Nellie Deutsch uh, mentioned uh, how she thought it's important and interesting that I say we can build critical thinking skills. So usually when we think about repeating things, right, uh, just repeating uh, dialogues, repeating words to memorize them. That's very boring and not meaningful. So that's not what I do. I talk a lot about repeating, uh, but the reason I talk about repeating is I want to develop this knowledge level at the bottom, right? That's where we collow, that's where we spark uh, up the taxonomy of, of learning. And my feeling is, from my work with my students and, and training teachers, when students have that base of knowledge, that recall, as Bloom called it here, then they can build higher. Without that, they feel stress, uh, they lose confidence, they may uh, act out, misbehave, be hyper in the classroom, fall asleep. So. I think one thing that we have to be very concerned about as teachers, yes, we have to uh, promote higher learning and critical thinking, but we must make sure we have a strong knowledge base. Uh, our students have this strong knowledge base, not from boring memorization, because that's not going to motivate them, and they'll forget it eventually, but in a way that's more meaningful exposure that's repeated to things they like movies, stories, uh, you know, videos, uh, songs. This is, this is the games. Right? How do we get, uh, and I see Francisco saying it's not easy to use with my students. It's not easy uh, to, to connect with students uh, often. It's true. Uh, but if we think about how we can use uh, more fun, repetitive uh, activities, and then introduce, uh, how could you, you know, be more creative with this knowledge? How could you, you know, use this for a project? Uh, that's what I hope teachers can do uh, to build on top of my materials and, and the songs. This is what my website looks like. Thank you for uh, Dr. Nelly. For, I think I need to start calling you Dr. N or Dr. D. Uh, I'll think about which one. Dr. D is better for my rhymes. I could put Dr. D in. Uh, this is what my website looks like. Is that okay, Dr. D? <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> oh, 
cool Nelly. She's just like Dr. D. Okay, Nelly's good. So uh, this is what my website looks like. Uh, I have a book. Uh, teachers often ask me about if they could buy my materials. I have a book, uh, activity book, that's a PDF book. You can reprint it uh, to uh, use many times. It comes with MP3s, 14 songs. Um, you can buy it through my website. You can also free uh, a preview and print a unit of, of the book. This is what my YouTube page looks like. No, it's this Nelly. is uh, from Facebook. Ah, uh, I want to mention today something. I want to see is anybody here from How to Improve Your English? Is anybody here uh, a member of this group? Ah, very good. <laughs> this is uh, a group that uh, I'm one of the admins of the group, and we have a really, really wonderful. A balance of teachers and students in this group. Uh, I strongly suggest joining us if you haven't already. It's, it's really becoming a very wonderful uh, place on Facebook to, to build English skills and, and share uh, ideas. Also, if you haven't joined, this is another page that, uh, this is uh, my page that I have, uh, that I started, but with a group of other teachers that use video, and we are going to do more with this page uh, soon, uh, so please check out ELTV. I want to announce, especially because some people I know have to leave early, uh, I want to announce that I'm taking a trip, uh, a, a seven-week program with the Department of State. This is when I was in Tunisia. Um, and I want to tell you which countries I'm going to, and uh, I, I don't choose the countries. The countries are uh, choose me, or the, the government uh, brings me to countries that have shown interest in, in having me come to train teachers and also to teach classes. Um, I am going to Morocco. I see Fatima on there. Anyone want to guess where I'm going? Uh, Morocco is one. I'll give you a hint. It's all yes, yes. <laughs> I wish it were Egypt. It's not Egypt. There is interest in Egypt, so I will be going, but I'm not going to Egypt this time. Uh, I'm going to Morocco at the end of the trip. At the start of the trip, I'm going to a new region, uh, and Morocco was the first. Not yet to Argentina or South America, Sandra, but keep helping me promote down there. Uh, there is interest also in some countries in South America, so I hope to go soon. Really hope to go to South America. I am going to uh, the Gulf, Persian Gulf. I'm going to uh, Bahrain, uh, Oman, Qatar, and then I'm going to uh, Jordan, going uh, west over to Jordan, and two very interesting uh, places, uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion about this, and I'm excited to. One is the West Bank, and one is Israel. And the last country uh, that I'll see after that is Morocco. Oh, I would love to go to, to Kenya. I've only been to West Africa, so uh, I hope definitely to go to, to Kenya region. So, yes, I'm going to those countries. I'll have much more information. I haven't announced that. Today's the first day I've announced that, and I will... Uh, be talking about that on Facebook uh, after the class. Can anybody think of any colos? Oh, I have a question here. Could you make a comment about rote learning? Ah, <laughs> so to me, uh, this is a great question. Let me just answer this one because I see it right there. I promise I will have uh, more time for questions. I just want to get through a little bit with uh, my presentation and a video, and then we'll do questions. But this is important. Uh, I uh, am against rote learning. If rote learning means re repeating uh, content in a way that's not meaningful, that's boring, um, that's, uh, and, and doesn't mean anything. So the audio lingual method of teaching languages and learning languages was famous or infamous for this uh, problem. Repeating things, however, is absolutely necessary. How do we learn our first language? We learn our first language through repeated exposure, right? So we have to do this in another language. It's the only way. But if you're in another country that's not English speaking, or even if you're in a country like this country, the US, but you don't get enough 
input, uh, you're not going to develop the fluency or the accuracy in, the, in grammar and pronunciation that you want. So we need some way to uh, provide uh, repeated exposure to language. Input is essential and repetitive input. So make has many word combinations, colos. If we don't hear them again and again and again, if we don't see them again and again and again, we will not have them here automatically and then we will not use them fluently in a conversation, uh, in a presentation, in an essay. So it's about, to me, fluency, uh, getting that repetitive exposure to the most common, most important input. Uh, I use music, I also use games, and anything that you use as teachers or students, anything you do uh, that provides you with repeated exposure to important vocabulary and you're motivated, enjoying it, that's the key. That's the key. A simple, clear description of kalo. Kalo is collocation, and collocation is a word combination. Let's get some examples here. Make what? Oh, there's Elizabeth from Italy. Make what? Can anybody think of a good, make an effort. Excellent. I have a song I'm going to show you brand new today with make, make friends, make sure. Make my day. Everybody here that came to hear, I want to say, you're making my day. I want to play a big video. I might make mistakes, but that's okay because I'm feeling great. Make fun. Ah, make fun of someone. But have fun. See how tricky it is, English? Make advances. Make a promise. Good, good. Let's go to the next one. How about do? Any word combinations you can think with? Uh, think of for do. Do homework. Do good in the world. Do good in the world and do well. If you fall, that's okay. It's okay if you fell. Do laundry. Do right. Don't be uptight. Do tests, yes, we take them, and we also do them. Do well on those tests, or just try to do your best. <laughs> do noise or make noise? Hmm. So it's not always easy, is it? We can make mistakes. For example, I want to play you. I think I saw it up here. Uh, Nelly, is the video available uh, for my daughter, it's it's called Lola or something. It's not the um, it's not YouTube. Ah, I want to play this. Oh, what did she say? Let's try that again. She's talking about her homework. What did she say? Oh, what did she say? Did she say she's doing her homework? It's too soft. Uh-oh, I don't know if that's me or, or you. But she said she's making her homework. That's right. But we do not say that. So why do you think my daughter said making her homework? You're doing homework? Yeah. Do people say it when they get older? Listen to what I say to her in response. See if I correct her or if I do something else. Uh-oh, I just turned the sound off. Did anybody hear what I said? Oh, I said you're doing your homework. <laughs> making something for someone, but actually, no. She's saying making homework because make and do in many languages are the same verb. So she's expressing the meaning, but she doesn't use the correct kalo. Why? Because she's five years old and she hasn't heard do homework, do homework, do homework, do homework, do homework. That's it. What are you doing? I'm making my homework. You're doing homework? Yeah, and uh... yeah.
Uh, I don't know and, if you can uh, understand what she said. She's five years old, but uh, she's talking about she's in kindergarten, and in her kindergarten okay. class, her teacher said to make an M, you go up to the skyline, down. To, oh, I gotta go this way. Down to the grass line, up to the skyline, and down to the worm line. <laughs> so the worm line meaning the ground. Uh, the point here is that my daughter uh, and anybody learning first language or second language is not going to think or should not think about the meaning of make or the meaning of do. It's the color that matters, right? It's not the meaning or the grammar here. Once she hears make, uh, sorry, do homework many times, she'll say do homework. Uh, the other day she said, uh, I like to sit on the sun. In English, we say sit in the sun. But in other languages, right in French, it's, it's au soleil, right? You know, to the sun. Or, so, so this is not about um, rules as much as it's about uh, exposure uh, over and over again. So uh, I'd like to now show you a video, and I want to hear your uh, comments about it. I haven't shown it yet. It's brand new. Uh, so let's see. Let me get rid of that. And Nelly, if, oh, not this one, even though I love that one. That's from Tunisia. Um, here we go. It's fluency. It's make or do, make, make, make or do, 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 Give yourself a break, relax and repeat for fluency sake. I make sure to do my homework and I hit the sack. I make a to-do list to stay on track. I need to do a few errands, I'll be right back. Make yourself at home, be my guest, make a snack. I make a bed in the morning, I do laundry at night. I don't make fun of people, that's impolite. I make a fist or do harm to someone in a fight. I'd rather do good, make peace and unite. You gotta do your duty to make things right. It's fluency. Let's make a plan to eat out at this restaurant. I know they make an excellent brunch. Can you make time to go? You'll have a chance to make friends and make some conversation. I can make a call now to make a reservation. You'll thank me for making such a great recommendation. It's do or make, make or do. If you've heard that they're different, it's not exactly true. Many languages have one word. Not two when you call it, it'll follow and make sense to you. Do or make, make or do. If you've heard that the different is not exactly true. Many languages have one word. Not two when you call it, it'll follow and make sense to you. It's when I run out of food, I leave the house to do the shopping. I do chores like the vacuuming and sweeping and the mopping. I make a gourmet dinner and also do the dishes. On Christmas, we make cakes like candles and make wishes. Do a certain do experiments. Develop your vision. Make a promise to yourself that when you make a decision, you'll make a point to do it well. And then you'll make a commitment to do it just as well again. Try to do good deeds and make a goal to do your best. Make sure to make mistakes or even make a big mess to make progress. Make a great effort. That's the key. Make a choice to learn the truth and it'll set you free. Do the math. Make it last. Peace, fool, and CMC. Make or do, do or make, thinking about it'll make your brain ache. Do yourself a favor, give yourself a break, relax and repeat for fluency's sake. I make sure to do my homework, then I hit the sack. I make a to-do list to stay on track. I need to do a few errands, I'll be right back. Make yourself at home, be my guest, make a snack. I make the bed in the morning, I do laundry at night. I don't make fun. 
fun of people. That's impolite or make a fist or two bomb to someone in a fight. I'd rather do good, make peace and unite. You gotta do your duty to make things right. Make, make all duty. Let's make a plan to eat out at this restaurant. I know they make an excellent brunch. Can you make time to go? You'll have a chance to make friends and make some conversation. I can make a call now to make a reservation. You'll thank me for making such a great recommendation. Do or make, make or do. If you've heard that the difference is not exactly true. Many languages have one word, not two. When you call, it'll follow and make sense to you. When I run out of food, I leave the house to do the shopping. I do chores like the vacuuming, the sleeping. The mopping. I make a gourmet dinner and also do the dishes. On birthdays, we make cakes, like candles, and make wishes. Do research, do experiments, develop your vision. Make a promise to yourself that when you make a decision, you'll make the point to do it well, and then you'll make a commitment to do it just as well again. Try to do good deeds and make a goal to do your best. Though you're sure to make mistakes or even make a big mess to make progress. Make great effort, that's the key. Make a choice to learn the truth and it'll set you free. Thank you for all those great comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It makes me feel really good. Standing ovation, thank you so much. Um, I want to see if you have any questions about the video. As you see, it's fast. The first part is really fast. Um, that's to practice listening skills and reading skills. Uh, the second part is slower. Is it really slow? No. I'm planning to make some chants that are slower, like make a mistake, do your best, right? But uh, that will come soon. Uh, this one is, uh, you know, intermediate and up. So the second part of the song uh, is designed to, if you want to, uh, to join me, to rhyme and rap with me. Uh, if you think, well, I don't understand that it was too quick. Remember, you can watch it again. And it's the repetition uh, of it that will help it come automatically. Don't try to memorize it. When you get a new uh, song with lyrics, you don't say, I have to study these lyrics. I have to learn this song. Right? That's no fun. And you naturally uh, you read the lyrics if you like the song, you're interested. And then after you repeat and repeat, you don't need the words anymore. And actually, that is how I make my songs. So uh, I want to take your questions. The first thing I'll tell you is when I make songs, I write down everything and, and I repeat the song myself. Do you have questions about the video? I'm checking the chat box here if anyone has a question. There are some made colors to look at if you like. Yeah, how long did it take to make it? Uh, I write songs, uh, a few songs at a time, and I work on a few videos at a time. This one was very important to me. Um, it took me a long time. I don't know how long. But make and do, to me, is kind of the classic uh, collocation uh, material. And uh, I've been, I wrote the song, actually, the last couple years. I've been writing it a little bit. And then I just uh, made uh, the music and the video. Ah, I knew I'd get this question. I wish your students would stand up and sing with you. <laughs> Let me explain that, because you might think, why are those students just sitting there? Well, they were a little bit nervous to be in the video. Uh, they, they did sing, and they did do stuff with me, but not with the camera going. So that was the reason. The other reason is uh, they are uh, in New York City, and New York City students tend to be a little more, you know, trying to be cool. You know, for the video, uh, but definitely they they get up and do stuff. Also, this was the first time I did the song, so they were trying to really think about it and listen to it. Uh, I saw great uh, two good comments. One I want to answer. Uh, yes, I make the videos myself. Uh, two of my friends, uh, two colleagues, uh, AMP is Alex Patinsky and Mr. Melody. That is Wendell. Uh, uh, they. Uh, are in a group with me called LT Funk, that's English Language Teaching Funk. 
and Alex and Wendell and I have some songs coming out uh, soon. We have two videos up, so please, please check that out. Uh, there is some singing on that one, but Wendell's got a great, great voice. We have a song coming out soon uh, called What Would You Do? And another thing I saw here, which is a great question, is we have to think about the length of the song for students. So if you're a you know, very, very beginning students, or if you are a beginner here today, uh, the great thing about YouTube is you can pause, you can repeat, so you can take a small part of the song, you know, my song or any song, uh, or a story or anything on video, and uh, you know, only use a small amount if you need to, uh, you know, focus on a little bit, because that is very important. You don't want to overwhelm your student. Could you discuss something about the use of Kowalern on first language acquisition? Excuse me. You know, I, I, I was, uh, for a time, a couple of years ago, I was getting interest in, in, in Kalo and Fluent CMC for learning uh, L1, English, here in the United States, for kids to learn to read. Uh, kids with learning disabilities, like dyslexia. Uh, and I'm very, very interested in that. I, I went uh, more to the, the ESL and EFL uh, route because that's my, my strongest uh, experience uh, in, my, in my background. And because uh, of connecting internationally through Facebook has just been so exciting. Uh, but I do think that there, uh, there's a lot that can be done with collocations in a first language. Oh my goodness, so much, and very little has happened. Um, so it's been mainly in second language acquisition uh, theory and teaching. So uh, I would, I have lots of ideas for this, but I'm not going to be focusing on that uh, at first. I'm going to be uh, moving ahead with a second language with Kahlo and especially uh, English as a second language. When are you going to create a video singing with your daughter? Good question. Uh, the first one will not be with her, however. It will be with my son, Oliver. Oliver um, has become a great writer of, of rhymes and, and starting to rap. Uh, I didn't influence him directly. I didn't try to get him to do it. In fact, he never seemed interested, but now he is. He's 10 years old. Uh, he's he's uh, brilliant uh, writing poetry, so uh, I'm really excited uh, to work with him. Uh, soon, soon, so we have to do that. So you will see that. Um, great. I'm just going to, uh, these are some Nate Collins. Uh, Charles Gruger is amazing and a uh, uh, mentor for me. And he was on Wiz IQ in a conversation, I agree. Uh, I agree. I mean, I recall. Uh, I think we have another Make Kahlo here uh, poster. You can see these on the Facebook page. A do poster. Uh, I just want to see if there's anything else in here I wanted to mention. Superpowered automatic recall of knowledge. That's Spark. Right? And this is Kahlo, so you often see me doing this. Kahlo and Spark. So just again, the idea of creating that foundation of knowledge. Uh, and this could be also in mathematics, multiplication table, uh, in learning a first language, you know, learning geography, in learning English and teaching English. And what I say is, and I think I have this in the next slide, let's build a base to support higher thought and hold on to all of the things that we're taught. Right? Let's build that knowledge base. Irregular verbs, uncountable nouns, make and do, Carlos. And then on top of that, then we can apply our knowledge. We can do projects. We can create. We can be critical thinkers. This is what uh, I believe is often missing. Uh, when we're teaching a second language, and <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, so connected to motivation, that if we do fun things to build knowledge, then uh, not only will we build that foundation of knowledge, but we will also keep our learners engaged and interested uh, to uh, get to uh, critical, critical or higher level thinking. Uh, how do you work hots into your songs? Is that a typo or is that a Nelly or is that, is that some jargon I'm not familiar with? I don't, I, excuse me. So I'm learning something today. I had never seen that before. Um, good question. So I, I'm definitely known more for building the knowledge, not the higher order thinking. However, uh, I have 
tons and tons of lesson notes and plans uh, for the future of how to build not just from the language in the song, uh, but that too, but the ideas in this song. Did anybody uh, notice any ideas in this song that might be useful to do the make and do song? Oh, so I'm not just making rhymes, just order make and do. I'm talking show. about uh, certain things. Did anybody hear any messages or themes if you were here for that song? So in that song, I'm talking about, uh, you know, doing your best, making a commitment, an effort to work hard. I'm talking about making peace, peace. Uh, th these ideas in the song, uh, in my songs in general, are there uh, for teachers to, to build upon. Uh, but I am not coming out with, uh, directly with, with activities now for critical thinking uh, and emotions and attitudes, absolutely. What I found, uh, Nellie and everybody, is when I travel, I'm going to go again, as I said, to the Persian Gulf, uh, Jordan and Israel, and the uh, and Morocco. Teachers often have good ideas for projects in critical thinking. They just don't have uh, the interest of the students to get to where they are more fluent. So that's what I feel my job is uh, right now, is to provide materials that will really get that input, that exposure, and then teachers can take that and move up. Uh, that, is, that doesn't mean that I don't have ideas for uh, developing critical thinking skills and hop. I love that higher order thinking skills. How did I not do it? Uh, but as I said, yeah, I'm, 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 the, I'm the MC for the knowledge base, uh, first and foremost. Any other questions? I'm glad we have a few more minutes. Hi to everybody. Motivation first, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> a hot song. You know what's going to come first? A time zone song. What do you think about that, Nelly? I'm going to write a time zone song. And that might maybe not solve the problem with Wiz IQ attendance, but it will help. I'm going to write a time zone song, time zone collar tune. I'm going to collar countries and time zone. What do you think? Right? <laughs> So many people ask me that, but what time is it? Where my blah, 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 blah. Uh, so I think that that could uh, solve the problem of the of not following uh, your country with GMT, which I understand because uh, none of us uh, uh, find that uh, easy. Now, someone said about teaching adults. I, I mainly teach adults. Uh, my my music is and and content is aimed a special school high school and uh, college. Now, if you are older than college, traditional college age, or if you are younger than middle school, I have some materials that are better for you. I have a lot of stuff for little kids, uh, not as much as for uh, big, big kids. Um, I, the the songs, some of them I understand adults say, I don't want to sing, I don't want to do this, it's music, it's silly, it's stupid. They're embarrassed when they're singing. I know. Uh, one thing is, they don't have to sing, right? So, you know, when you watch a video, and please uh, please think about this. When you first hear songs, do you sing? So, you know, you, you listen. You know, just like language, we first listen. So one, uh, the, the most important thing I can share today, uh, and this is not my idea, of course, uh, is that when you give someone a song or any input, uh, you don't want to ask them, you know, do it, do it. You got to do it with us. You know, so part of the problem is if the song is childish, you know, like a, a, a silly kid song, that's one problem. Another problem is when we say, why don't you do it? Participate, participate. But the brain needs time to take it in. And maybe that person will not rap or sing. Uh, but if they're interested, if they're motivated, maybe someone else in the group will want to perform it. Right? So that's about learning styles. Right? That's about learning styles and how we're all different in wanting to produce the language or not. But I think for all of us, right, you, you, don't, you don't listen to a song on the radio and get the lyrics and start, start repeating it, right, uh, right away. Okay? Um, 
you have it have it in you is uh oh we like you to have it in you so, yes I, I need to do a new video for you have it in you uh i have a president song uh I, I, already i don't know fatima if you if you know that one if that's what you're talking about you can download my songs there are two ways to get my songs one way is uh, through youtube it's not the official way but it's free the other way is to buy my activity book, which comes with songs, uh, or my CD. So the CD is on I iTunes, Amazon, uh, and CD Baby. You can get the links from my uh, website. And you can also link to the activity book with uh, lesson plans and exercises for students. Uh, and that comes with the MP3s, which you can copy for your use. In the future, I promise you, I will have more materials so, uh, available. Uh, better quality uh, right now, or I should say the last couple of years, I'm sharing all of this uh, as I'm developing it, but I will have much more uh, material, uh, more classes, everything else in some shape or form uh, soon. I do a podcast actually uh, with, with like you recordings of songs. There, there are all kinds of things we can do. Uh, I do a podcast of, recently, my wife and I, uh, Brigitte, her nickname is Bish. She was on that song, by the way. She's the one that said, make or do, do or make. Uh, she, she and I have a podcast. You can find us on SoundCloud. If you look under my name, Jason R. Levine, SoundCloud. I'll just put that in the chat box. Uh, we are going to do more to promote this. We haven't had the time uh, recently. SoundCloud.com. And that's a podcast you want to look for uh, under my name. I think you can also search Fluency MC, uh, but that's a conversation podcast that my wife and I are making. It's so much fun. We're going to make more of those uh, in the future. The chat is about to end. Any last questions? I was going to show another video. Uh, I don't have time for it, so I just want to uh, quickly advise the teachers who'd like to adapt your approach to their classes. First thing, contact me. Chat with me. Find uh, Let me find out who your learners are. Oh, we'll watch this as a way out. This is uh, Hey Tunisia. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. Peace and much respect. CMC, New Jersey, Hafez Zanina, aka Stratigo, DJ Ghost, representing Seuss, one Tunisia, one world, one love. Hey Tunisia, I'm pleased to greet you. For nearly a year, I've been waiting to meet you. What a wonderful treat to be invited here. The future of ELT to me is quite clear. Students far and near are learning from each other. Sisters and brothers, fathers and mothers, look and you discover, listen and you'll hear it. The gold is flowing with the fluency spirit. YouTube and Facebook, AB and I, we grew this. Hafez Zanina took a look and he knew this. We were ready to do this, so they brought me to Tunis. First stop on the airwaves, FSAE, then the American corner, and teacher friends at the embassy. Fluency was meant to be. Then we went to see access students, amateurs, Eastern world of languages at the family place. Peace, my interview, Jace. We didn't slow down the pace. We hit the coast in Hammermet. We spent two days at FLTA, Tom Nesla, and...
All right. I'm glad we extended the class for a moment. That that uh, video, that song, uh, is, really touches me because I had uh, an incredible experience uh, in April in Tunisia and seeing all those faces, and Nisaba, uh, Hafez Anina, and, and others. Uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, I can't wait to go back to, to that area, to Morocco. I will be going to Tunisia again next year. I really want to go to Argentina. Uh, a lot of people in Argentina and Brazil are now following me, so I'm hoping that means that uh, I'll be invited down there soon. Uh, Mexico is another place, uh, Chile and Peru. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that will happen. Uh, the best way, and <laughs> I can't wait. I want to go to Japan too. Um, the best way to, to help me make that happen is to spread the word, right? Let me put that in the in the chat box here. Spread the word, <laughs> meaning share my videos. Many times people ask me, oh, I'd love to go to India too, my goodness. Uh, if you, if you, some people ask me, can I use your video even today, right? Is it okay to use your video? People are so thoughtful, so polite, thank you, but that's the point. Share them, email them, post them on Facebook. Uh, if you're in Russia, post them on VK. Uh, if you're, you know, where, whatever uh, social media you use, tweet them. Uh, this will help uh, build more of an audience and uh, help help me professionally. And um, I'd be grateful as uh, as a as a colleague and a friend for any support any of you uh, give me. And I've gotten so much of it, and uh, I'm really really thankful for that. Great. Um, bye to Javier. I, I, we need to stop now. I know people need to go. Uh, I would love to, to come back uh, anytime, Nelly. Anytime. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch about that. <laughs> Do you want to take us out of here? <laughs> Thank you. How about, yes, how about, I'll, I'll do it, but how about some guests? I want to bring ELT Funk, I've got other singers, uh, how about poets, I've got other, special guests. <laughs> okay, because we'll, they'll get, all right, they'll get sick of me after a while, different people in here too. So, no, thank no, you, you so can, much. You can stay on forever, you can have a whole marathon, have you thank you so having much. A Thank marathon you. of Jason on their side too. Facebook, YouTube, a everybody. marathon. Take care, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yes. 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 Okay, so let's, let's make it happen. Make.
Make. Let's make it happen. No way. Never get Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Have a great have a great weekend. Bye bye.